Matt, thank you for doing this uh, with me. I'm excited to teach you about circles and see what kind of results you get from it. Um, I don't know if you remember this. Maybe you, you probably do. But do you remember our first conversation in person at PodFest? I asked you, what do you call a sales call where nobody buys? Do you remember what you said? Yeah, waste of time. <laughs> a waste of time. Yes. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like where I started down the path of developing serve calls was I came to the same conclusion. I was like, wait a minute. This is a waste of time. That's not what we want. Um, and I, you know, I think word choice matters a lot. And so for me, it came down to just, just the fact that we call a sales call a sales call, I think sets it up for failure because that's just built into the name. There's a pass fail, right? It's like either you make yeah. a sale and you succeed or you don't and it doesn't. And so that kind of like creates, I think, an unhealthy pressure in going into the call. Now, of course, the reality is, yes, like we're doing these calls to sell products, to sell programs, to make money, but we want it to be more than that. We want, like this is part of my core framework. One of my books is called Always Be Teaching. I want every interaction that I have with a potential client to be teaching and adding value to them. And I want the same for you. So yeah, this quick, yeah so quick backstory on surf calls, where this came from, and then we're going to kind of get into the specifics here, is that, you know, essentially I started, I went down this rabbit, rabbit hole. I was going to say rabbit trail. Yeah, rabbit trail, right? Wow. Ignore the thumbs down. <laughs> wow, the AI. I didn't do AI? anything. AI <laughs> thumbs down. Wow. Okay. No, I know it wasn't you. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's um, yeah, they're, they're like, that's not it, John. That's not it. Um regardless, I went on this deep dive um a few years ago where I started going into like what do the best uh when especially when you're creating a new offer, what do the best companies do for customer research? Like where you're like creating a new product, so you're talking to potential customers learning about their problems, their pain points, their jobs to be done, and then developing a program. And then I, I kind of segue from that into like, how do um, high impact coaches run those coaching calls? Like what kind of questions do people ask to get people to go deeper and typically in paid coaching calls to right. just unlock a radical transformation. And okay. then lastly, then I, then I spent at least $30,000 and more hours than I care to admit studying high ticket sales. And so okay. like, basically what I did was I took all of that and I created a framework that I started calling serve calls. So step one was just change the name and say, no, it's a serve call. The goal is to serve the other person. So it's always successful, but it's basically a combination of those three things. It's a customer research coaching conversation that leads to a sale. Okay. So cool. that's kind of like, just, just to kind of set the stage, like that's the premise I, for a serve call. Yeah. 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 So I, I'd be love to know a little bit about how do you currently sell? Because you mentioned you do like, you know, on like five or more calls a day. So you're on a lot of these calls. Do you have like a framework or approach or style that, or, the, or strategy that you typically use? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So essentially they're, they're you know, uh, breakthrough strategy sessions is, is really the name mm -hmm. of it, you know, what we do. And um goal for the call is really or frame for it is first understand you know what the author is writing about um mm -hmm. you know understand their book concept uh understand what their goals are for that book because that that's a very that varies pretty widely actually and yeah that's a little bit um customized and then also yeah what are the area like where are they at in the process and what are they needing help with and um, and so really understanding, you know, the challenges it, it would be, you know, there. And then based on that, you know, are we a good fit? Like, cause a lot of times, mm -hmm. sometimes we get to there and it's like, yeah, we can't serve you. Like, here's mm -hmm. where we would recommend you go. Or, yeah. you know, I was talking with a woman the other day and she's like, this is for my friends and family. And I'm like, that's great. Here's where you should go. Cause you know, they're going to help you out a lot better and it's going to mm -hmm. be a better point for you. So right. it's either redirect or like, okay, yeah, we are a good fit. And I mean, to be fair, obviously these are people that have, you know, are wanting to professionally self-publish a book. And so mm -hmm. most of the time, like we are, uh, you know, we are a good fit and yeah, uh, kind of where I was being cheeky on like the waste of time is like, uh, you know, it's like when you get to the end, it's like, yeah, we are a good fit. Here's how we're going to help you. And then, you know, they don't end up moving forward, working with us. It's, it's like, Oh, cause that's kind of a waste of yeah. their time and our time. Cause it's like, I didn't help you get moving on your book and really the next totally. Step, you know, getting through, yeah. but, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the framework. So it's like, okay, 
understand, do discovery, make sure like, yes, we are, we can help you. What you're wanting help with aligns with what we do well. And then cool. Let's, you know, let's walk through and make sure yeah. which program or, you know, what makes sense. No, that's cool. I think, especially th thank you for sharing that context. And, and um, so you're selling on behalf of like selfpublishing.com. I think just like, I, I need to remember this, this is recorded. So I'm assuming yeah. there's people watching this who don't have context. One thing that's I think unique because you gave me a chance to like look through the whole like process before someone gets on a call with you compared to most people I work with, you guys actually have more um, check boxes in terms totally. of like leads coming through, like verify, like, are you financially qualified? Is your, are you just a crazy person off the internet or you actually have a decent, really good idea? Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and someone they meet with, so typically they meet with someone else or they attend a workshop before they talk to you. Yeah. So to me, yeah. that tells me that like, if someone's not buying, at that point, like I, I want to, I want to diagnose that a little bit in terms of like why are they not buying? Because it sounds like it's a waste of time for everybody. Is if they got through all these hoops and ladders, you know, to get to this point where they're talking to you and it's like final decision time, and then they don't move forward, then it's we've wasted everyone's time. Their time is wasted as well in the process. So, right. I'd love to walk you through the surf call framework and kind of just like talk it through. And I think um, I, then I'd love to just just like stop me with whatever questions you have because I'm just gonna like share my screen and kind of like talk through some of these resources. But oh, I would love. Yeah um that i am curious did you get a chance well we'll come back to that never mind we'll get back to that but i did I, the Probably. 10x promise thing or which one yeah i watched it all and i i wrote okay. it out and to be fair i was like man this is a lot harder than i thought it was going to be but yeah. <laughs> yeah it is it's really it's really hard it's hard to create one sentence that captures everything but if you do it changes the whole dynamic so the yeah. 10x promise does dramatically affect the effectiveness of the serve call but the good news about the serve call is the way that it's designed you actually, especially because you're doing these repeatedly, your customer actually rewrites your 10x promise for you. So all you need is a first draft. Um, so let me kind of just share and walk you through this. So yeah. um, this is the framework and I'll give you a copy of this, of course, you know, but um, this is every time I do a surf call. And at this point, I myself, sorry, I myself personally have done over a hundred of these. Um, I think last I checked, last I counted, it was like 130, you know, that's led to multiple six figures in sales. But I've also had other clients who have had zero sales experience and you claim that they hate selling, learn how to run a surf call, do it, and then generate six figures right away from a new offer. And so like, that's kind of where this is like becoming, again, it's a custom research coaching conversation that leads to a sale. So it, a couple of things I want to say strategically where this is different from a lot of sales processes. One of them is that a lot of sales processes make the mistake of spending a lot of time on selling to the head right? Of like logically why you should buy, you know, why this matters. What are the logistics? When is the date? What's the price? What are the perks? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I, yeah, all that, yeah. yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But the reality is the way that the humans make emotional decisions, especially with purchasing, we make emotional purchasing decisions and then we rationalize them. And so the serve call is designed to focus really all of the energy on the emotional connection and coaching and only create space for just enough of the logical part of the sale to close the sale and no more. Okay. Um, so I'll explain that more when we get to the pitch. But as okay. it starts, some of this is pretty straightforward, especially because you have a lot of sales experience in terms of, um, this is just a note for myself <laughs> of like the attitude to have going into a serve call just to reset and say, be kind, be curious and believe. Um, and you know, so honestly, curiosity and confidence are key ingredients to a successful surf call of like genuinely being curious about the other person's situation, story, life goals, all those things, but also having the confidence that you can't help them. Yeah. But step one is just to establish the relationship. You won't have any trouble with this. Some people who don't have a lot of sales experience because they're nervous when they jump on a call, they'll jump straight into like, let's talk about the product. And it's really critical that within the first two minutes, you find some sort of common ground, right? Could be the weather, could be a, you know stories about your kids, whatever. It doesn't. It's not actually that important what it is. And there's some ideas here of questions you can ask, but it's really just a checkbox to say like, okay, I established a relationship. The reality is now you've just established a relationship. The relationship is going to continue to grow throughout the rest of the call. Um, but that's just step one. Like you don't the, stop there. <laughs> yeah, it's not like okay, we're done being friends now. We had our two minute yeah. friendship. It's like yeah, let's dive in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and people will do that sometimes say exactly that, by the way. They're like, okay, well, now we got the chit chat of it. Let's dive in. And you're like, okay, well, now you just change the dynamic. You just basically you're you're telling someone on the other side of this how they should what they should expect and what kind of attitude they should have. And we want the whole thing to be very conversational. 
So the most important thing I want to call attention here are the words in bold. That's essentially the goal of each part of the serve call. And then the other, the copy next to it are just example questions that can do this. But these are really key, these two right here. It sounds like you do some version of this right now where you're really yep. spending a lot of energy going back and forth between what are the results you want and what are the roadblocks in your way, right? So this is where you're diving into, hey, I'd love to learn more about your good work and your goals. What are you trying to accomplish right now? How's that going so far? Those kind of questions to get people to tell you, well, I want to write a book. I want it to be a bestseller. Uh, why is that important to you? Like those kind of questions, just, and what else? You know, just again, just getting detail here. And I actually have a place here. I mean, I'll literally take notes while someone's talking of like, what are the big ideas that they mentioned to me as far as results or roadblocks? Mm. And then, but I think a lot of people stop once they get an initial answer here. Like they have something to write down of like what they want. What I love to do is kind of just, this is what makes it really a coaching call, honestly, is, is digging a bit deeper. You know, what's, this is different than the coffee shop conversation about you meet someone at a coffee shop and they're like, what are you working on? And you're like, oh man, I mean, I'm writing a new book. And they're like, that's cool. What's your goal with the book? And you're like, well, I want to be a bestseller. They're like, awesome. Well, good luck with that. Right. right? Like that's, that's the coffee shop level conversation. But right. when was the last time somebody spent time digging deep with you about your goals, why they matter? What specifically are you going to do to achieve them? What specifically is standing in your, in your way? I find that honestly, just that habit of like taking an extra five or 10 minutes beyond what most people feel comfortable with and going deeper into why that matters um, is critical for breakthrough. I have one client who mm. um, <laughs> for a surf call with him, I'm talking about this and he's saying like, he's like, well, I want, he's like, I have an email list, I have an online business. I want to make money, right? We're talking about results here. And he's like, but it's just, it's, it's never made enough to pay the bills. And that's really frustrating. And so it's tempting for me to go straight into like, let's talk about product design and marketing and like, how do we solve that problem? But I started asking follow-up questions like, I mean, that sounds really super frustrating. Tell me more about that. And what kind of impact has that had on your life? And after a few minutes of just asking him to go deeper, he kind of, you could see physically shoulders go down, guard opens up. And he said, he said, my wife works full-time and we made an agreement when the kids were young that I would work from home so I could take care of the kids, but then I would build my business so that when the kids were out of the house, we could spend more time together and we could essentially be empty nesters where I've got an online business paying the bills. Mm. Well, the kids are on their way out of the house. I still don't make enough money. My wife can't retire because of me. Whoa. This whole conversation changed. This was not about products. This was not about yeah. sales strategy. Right. It's like it's digging deeper into results and roadblocks. Yeah. It's not, oh man, I'd like more revenue. It's like, no, yeah. That's a, yeah. Yeah. No, I want to understand my role within my family and I want to, I want to retire my wife. I mean, it's, it's the deeper things of like why this matters. I want to show her that I'm worth something because he started kind of getting vulnerable about his own situation. Yep. So, so that's the results and roadblocks here. But then resources is this third category that comes up. And there's a great example of this. I just reviewed somebody's surf call last week where we're going through results and roadblocks and she's sharing, you know, like that she wants to, uh, she wants to grow her group coaching program. Specifically, we start getting, he starts getting deeper in the call and learns that she wants to specifically double her income this year because she wants to retire in five years. And if she doubles her business income, she can do that. Right. So it seems pretty straightforward as far as what's standing in her way. Well, she's tried these marketing strategies. She's not getting leads from LinkedIn. She's getting a bunch of comments, but they're not becoming customers, all of those kind of things. And then in this throwaway comment at one point, she mentions the price of her program, which is for real estate brokers, um, was $227. Mm. So that's neither a result or a roadblock, right? It's this third category right. of like, wait a minute, plot twist. You don't see that, but I see that we can double your business immediately by just charging a more appropriate price for your product. Right. Um, and so all the other tactics that we would kind of tempt, be tempted to go to, it's like, this is a whole other third category. Sometimes under resources, this becomes like, right. like when we're talking about books in your case, this might be someone saying like, you know, well, I've never written a book, but, um, you know, a close, a close friend of mine is a New York Times bestseller or you know, like I've actually got, I'm in a mastermind group and several of the people in the mastermind group have huge audiences and they've, they're cheering me on on this book, right? You got this whole other category of resources over here of like, what's going to help them get the result and avoid the roadblock. So that becomes a, your, your goal here is just basically to build your case of like results, roadblocks and resources. 
but what's what I find typically is that I'm making notes over here and it's kind of like more and more, you know, as we're talking and then something will, someone will say something and I'm paying attention to the emotions they're sharing when they say it and their body language. And I'll you typically bold that of like, that's what really matters, right? They're going to list a bunch of different ways to talk about their goal, but you know, with a book, it might be something as simple as, I mean, like, I, let me just think about me in my first book. For me, a book wasn't just a business strategy. It was a commitment to taking my career seriously. And by seriously, I mean owning my expertise. Mm. And by that, I would, and by that, what I really mean is that there were a lot of people in my life who didn't see me as an expert. And so I was afraid to publish a book, but I also knew by doing so, there was no going back because now I was an author. And so for me, it was about committing to a new identity. What, what, which, what the book topic was, how many copies it sold, didn't matter. Didn't matter. It was an identity yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, Total. And so like, that made sense. Yeah. So for me, that would have been what you would be looking for to then like kind of bold in the notes of like, that's what really we need to focus on here. Yeah. So typically when I'm doing a surf call, they're, you know, about... 45 minutes, I would say like, I've had people do them that are 30 minutes long. You know, I've had people do them that are an hour. I've had some clients do two hour surf calls. I do not recommend that. It's like just way too much time invested in here. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's exhausting. Yeah. Um, but, but typically at this point, I'm trying to spend the first, like if it's a 45 minute call, I'm trying to spend honestly till about minute 30 here on just like going deep into results, roadblocks and resources. And then if you want to share, because some people feel like <laughs> compelled as a teacher, as a coach to like, okay, well, I, I, you've just shared all these problems and I can see the obvious solutions to these problems. Like I want to, I just like have this like physical need to tell you how to solve all these problems. <laughs> My advice there is you can give one tip to solve one problem practically on the call. But what makes it a really powerful coaching call is not the advice you give. It's going deep in question and asking people questions about why things matter right. and helping them come to conclusions that they've never said out loud before. Right. It's like the and clarity so, that they're receiving from having this type of conversation. Exactly. I mean, it's the kind of thing you would pay, like, a, I don't know, like it's the kind of thing you would pay a therapist for, except for therapists usually don't know much about business or your business at least. And so it's like, it's like, <laughs> this is essentially like a form of business therapy of like, you know, and how do they make you feel? <laughs> it just it's those, it's those types of questions. Let me mirror it's, your book back to you so you can, yeah, get progress on it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then this is really key, the recap, which is this is honestly also the segue into the sale, um, okay. which the most important question is this part right here. It's it's just asking. So I want to, so again, you can word choice. You can change this however you want, but this is the core concept you have to communicate is I want to make sure you walk away from this call with clarity. So for your benefit, as much as mine, what is your most useful takeaway from today's coaching conversation so far? A couple of things I want to point out here. What this question does, and I originally got this question from Michael Bungay Stinger in his book, The Coaching Habit, because he calls this the learning question, because the part of our brain that is typically going on in conversations like this is just we're, we're processing and absorbing information so rapidly that it doesn't actually engage our long-term memory. Mm -hmm. But when you ask a reflection question like this, it causes people to pause and to activate their long-term memory to reflect on everything that was just said while it's still fresh and to pull out whatever was their most useful takeaway. Now that accomplishes several things. One, because it activates their long-term memory, they're more likely a week or two weeks or a month later to remember their takeaway from that conversation. I just had a client reach out to me that I had a surf call with a year ago and I have not spoken to since. And she followed up and she said, hey, I am still thinking about that coaching call we had a year ago. Can we jump on another call with my business partner? And then by the end of the call, they joined my $10,000 program. Mm. Because a year ago, she remembered me asking. <laughs> she didn't remember me asking this, but she just remembered her takeaway. Yeah. So, sure. yeah. The yeah. second thing it does uh, is it, <laughs> it validates for you what was useful to them. Because occasionally you'll ask this question, we're like, what is your most useful takeaway from today's call so far? And someone will say like, uh, I don't know, actually. I mean, my real problem's over here. We haven't even talked about that. It's important you know that before you get to the sale, right? Because now right. we can go, okay, well, tell me, oh, we can go I back. I didn't do a good job of diving deep, so let's go <laughs> <Yeah>. back. <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes we'll share, we'll get really deep into like, they're like, 
childhood origin story and like why something matters. And I'm like, oh, I know, I know what the big thing is. And I'm like, what's the most useful takeaway? And they'll say, remember when you said a product is just a promise for a price? Man, I'm still thinking about that, which that's a real thing that I hear a lot. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. Well, let's focus on that because that's, it's actually, it's, it's, it's what's up. It's what we're giving them a chance to speak into what was the most useful takeaway. Right. The other it thing that's key about this yeah, question, it, sorry, like they see something different. And so it's important to exactly. follow their lead on it. Yeah, exactly. This other question, right. This other part right here so far is really key because it also, it, 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 it communicates that the conversation is not over. The value you're getting, the takeaway you're getting is not over. It's still coming, but this kind of just is a way to segue. Um, yeah. Another thing that this question does is it activates the reciprocity effect where when someone says like, what they're essentially saying is like, oh, wow, what you gave me was this thing. Unless they're a sociopath, they have an immediate need to give back to you because they feel like they owe you a debt because they've named it. They're like, you gave me this thing. Oh, I need to give you something. And so actually, if you just ask this question, even before you get to the recommendation, often people will say, well, my use, you know, I guess my use most useful takeaway was this right here, but like, what about you? We haven't even talked about your business. I mean, what exactly are you doing? And what they're saying is I have this itchy feeling in my body. Like I owe you something and I need to pay off this debt. Mm. That is a, the, a, the emotional state that this question gets people into is a little bit of awe at what they learned, right? They feel like they just had a win and they feel like they owe you. And it, it, it emphasizes the positive energy. It's the best emotional state for someone to be in before they make a decision of whether or not to work with you. So any questions about that so far before we talk about the actual like recommendation or the pitch about what we've, any questions about what I've covered so far? Um, Not so much question. I mean, it all, it all makes sense. And I, I think the, the one, the resources is probably, um, yeah, it's probably the one I'm most curious about, like in sure. regards to like, how does that fit in from a flow perspective? Cause I get the results, the roadblocks. Yeah. Um, that's probably the one that I'm like, oh, that's new and, and different, or at least that's not where I would have, you know, originally thought to put that. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, no, that's yeah. great. I'm, let me speak to that. I'm glad you brought that yeah. up. I will say originally when I did this, I just had results in roadblocks because that's honestly what the most thing that's most critical for closing the sale later. But where it came, where I added this third category of resources was things kept coming up. Like what I said, where I'd ask someone like, well, what's standing in your way? And they would say like, well, you know, I'm not getting enough traction on LinkedIn. I'm not getting people to buy my product. Like I'm, I got 12 people in my program, but you know, they're only paying $227 each. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, another way to call this might be plot twists, essentially. Uh, often <laughs> someone will share something that changes the whole narrative, right? Mm. That like, it, it's a plot twist. Um, so I do find that when someone's telling you about results or roadblocks, it's, it, it's really natural just to be able to ask like, okay, well, what inspired you to start down this path? You know, or even to ask like, what's worth, one reason when we're celebrating? So for example, I had one client who at the start of the call was talking about all his problems were the fact that his cash flow was almost non-existent. He like was he had basically like no money coming in. He had um uh he had a big client contract that had failed. Um, and so he just lost his guaranteed minimum three hundred thousand dollars a year. It was like a client contract was just gone. He um his goal is to like figure out how to fix his business fast. So this does not sound like a good quality lead, right? Like we're like, I'm like, I am so sorry for you, man, but like <laughs> I'm not that's a sounds like a desperate situation. And then we start, I start asking like, well, what's a win that you've had recently that's worth celebrating? And he said like, well, I mean, last year I launched my first ever online course and I made a hundred thousand dollars in the first 24 hours and then proceeded to, to generate results close to that every month for the rest of the year. And so I didn't realize that that was like not a guaranteed thing forever. And so um, it was awesome. The money was coming in, but I made a really smart decision to set aside the majority of that money into my war chest which I'm living off of now. So I've actually got cash in the bank. I just know that something about my product strategy needs to change because I was dependent upon luck before. And I can't do that anymore. And I'm like, okay, that is a resource. That is a, that is a whole collection of resources, right? That's, you had a, you, you had a hundred thousand dollar, your first course launched at a hundred thousand dollars in 24 hours. You have, and I quote, a war chest of money available. And you know that, you know, like those, those are resources. Those are examples of resources. So Mm. In your case, I mean, I think that could be a lot. I mean, literally, it's just 
in the process of asking about results and roadblocks, this is important for him to point this out. These questions are presented linearly. It doesn't usually happen linearly. Right. Honestly, right. Ha half the time, all you have to say is what's on your mind. And someone says, I really want to write a book. I want it to be a bestseller. Um, I don't know what I don't know. And I tried working with this other partner before and they stole all my money, which is a roadblock. Um, and, you know, like I, I do have an email list of like 50,000 email subscribers, but I'm just like not sure how to like get them to buy the book. So that's a resource, you know, like, and so resource. oftentimes all you have to say is what's on your mind and you end up getting all three. Yeah. Um, does well, that I mean, clarify? I, yeah, no, no, that is clear. And okay. I think what's helpful about it even there, like, as I'm thinking is like, you know, it's like you get, it's like, okay, cool. Like, kind of like you said, plot twists. It's like, cool. Okay. We do the results. You're like, yeah, anything else? You're like, nope. And then roadblocks. Okay. Anything else? Nope. And then you're like, <laughs> And then really what this is, is another way for them to be like in a different way also to just be like, yeah, either, hey, what is a, if, if they're like going on this trajectory of like, oh, downward spiral, hey, what is a when you can celebrate, just kind of get them back into like, you know, I'm here to solve this problem mode, not, you know, complain yeah. about it or whatever. And then, or also like, yeah, what, you know, what got you started down with this path to begin with? Like, I'm, I'm curious about that, even though you've talked through some of these things, it's like, mm -hmm oh actually and it's like okay here's something that they you would have thought they would have brought up earlier but you know just because of the conversation it doesn't always come up or um exactly. I, I think you know do you have friends who've already done what you're trying to do like in books that's a great question that would be a great question because yeah um a lot of times people do or they don't um you know i can see where that might bring up stuff well oh yeah i need to go talk to them first before i talk to you and it's like okay well you know that's not always helpful, but yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's not, it's not always helpful, but it's always, uh, it's essentially a third dimension of looking at their situation, like results, roadblocks, right. resources, because using the book example, if you were to ask like me, for example, do you have friends who've already done what you're trying to do? I'm like, well, actually, yeah, here's the awkward thing. Most of my friends in business are already New York Times bestselling authors. This is a true statement. And I hadn't written a book yet. And I was just afraid, honestly, of like publishing a crappy book because- yeah. The, because I also knew that like there's these people that like I wanted to endorse the book and to quote in the book and promote the book who are like already New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestselling authors. And as part of that also, and this is where like if you were having a circle all the time, I would have been honest with you. And it probably would not have come up sooner. I would have said like, Matt, I love the idea of being an Amazon bestseller. But like, I'm also kind of nervous of like, they're, they laugh at Amazon bestsellers. My friends like mock them. They're like, oh yeah, you're bestseller. Okay. You know, how do I, what, what, help me understand like, <laughs> What do I do with that? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, but that's something that would not have come up another way. Um, yeah. No, that yeah. makes good sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So that's why that's very important. Cool. Yeah. So, so we talked about the recap and then the recommendation, this is, this is something I, I pulled in a visual for this. This is from my newsletter, but I pulled it in here because I thought it was helpful to talk through it. When you're selling an, a product, especially an educational product, and I know your program has a mix of coaching and done for you. So it's actually kind of the best of both worlds, honestly. Yeah. Um, the first, the first hurdle you have to overcome with, for any product is actually desire. It's not any of these three, but it's like, if they got to this point in the conversation, there has to be the validation of desire that they want the outcome. Yep. Now there are three hurdles you have to overcome in order to close a sale. Number one is credibility, which is essentially, can you help? Can you actually help? Now, the reality is a lot of times people have already checked this box before they ever talked to you because they've, I mean, look, I I noticed this right before we jumped on, actually, even right there on the uh, selfpublishing.com website, it says we're the number one resource for writing self-publishing and marketing books online. So that's a credibility statement, right? We're right. the number one resource. And so if someone heard, if they know of Chandler Bolt or they know of what you do, or they maybe know somebody else who's gone worked with you before, that's credibility, right? Yep. So. Like my friend, Tony DeLorenzo has sold over 50,000 copies, I think now of his six pillars of intimacy since working with you guys. That was credibility. When he told me that I was like, okay, I have no more questions about credibility. No yeah. more questions. Right. That's the, yep. so that's the first one you have to overcome. A lot of people think credibility and believability are the same, but believability is actually where most sales get lost, which is, can you help me? Mm, yeah. It's like you help those guys, but can you help me? Yes. In my specific situation where I, as a special snowflake, have my own unique set of problems, <laughs> then can you help me? 
And that's honestly where most sales for high ticket educational products get lost because a lot of people skip that step. Um, and then the third level is scarcity, which honestly, scarcity, if you've already <laughs> passed desire, credibility, and belief, scarcity should be the easiest one to work out. Now, scarcity is when you get into, is this investment worth my limited money and time? It's, you know, tip money and time are typically the scarcest resource we're talking about and this kind of yep. thing. But here's the thing. That's where, that's the, that's honestly scarcity is the first time that the head takes the reins rather than the heart. But if you've already sold the heart before you ever get to this point, then your heart is going to be harassing your head to find a way basically. Yeah. To cross yeah the it's last like the, those are logistical. They're yes. not like, oh, that's really in the way because you're, 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 heart will figure out how to yeah like exactly so i often compare it to like like imagine if you were a realtor and you were like selling a house and you know you got the wife's wish list before you before you meet up with a couple at the house and you found her a three-bedroom you know house within you know 10, 10 miles of her favorite places like she gave you a wish list and you're like all right the wife's happy let's go sell this house the husband and wife show up and imagine as a realtor if you spent the entire tour just talking to the husband and, and walking into the house and in pretty much ignoring the wife and saying like to the husband, he's like, well, you know, this house, you know, it's a great market. If you buy right now, this house is within your budget and it's probably going, it's already appraised actually as within your budget. And the equity is probably going to go up. It's probably going to double in the next five years. Um, you know, and like, if, if you just focused on all the logical financial reasons why you got there and you know, you're like, look, it's a three bedroom. It's what she wanted. It's got the backyard she wanted. And if you don't, if you spend all your energy talking to the husband and he's like, okay, it sounds like a good deal. We'll let you know. And they get in the car. But then as soon as they close the door, if she turns to him and says, did you see the fact that the laundry room's in the garage? I mean, can you imagine our master bedroom's upstairs? Can you imagine having to walk our clothes up a flight of stairs from, from the garage through the house and then up a flight of stairs? Like, I'm just exhausted thinking about it. And Emmett's room is is on would have to be on the bottom floor. And honestly, he still gets up sometime in the night and needs help and support. And I'm worried we're not gonna be able to hear him upstairs. And did you see the neighbor's dog? I mean, I don't know what kind of breed that is, but it's big and it's scary. And I just, I just don't know that we feel safe there. You didn't get that sale, right? Right, yeah. But this is what a lot of people do. And Matt, I haven't like gone over your sales calls in detail. Like I'm not accusing you consistently, specifically yeah, this, but yeah. what a lot of people do in sales is we spend all our energy trying to sell to the head and ignore the heart or at the very least spend a little bit of time making the heart happy. And then we're like, okay, cool. The head's the decision maker. That's not true. That is not true. We, as humans, we emotionally, <laughs> we make emotional purchases and then we rationalize them. Uh, I asked my friend and client, Zach, the other day about this. We were talking about this and I asked him, I was like, hey, I saw you wearing AirPods. I think this is the pro version like me. And I had just taught this lesson. So he was thankfully honest. I said like, why did you buy those AirPods? He said, oh, because I knew people who were cool who wore them and I wanted to be cool. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's the really honest good at marketing to be cool. <laughs> yeah. That's the honest answer, right? That's the honest answer. Yeah. And then he's like, you yeah. know, and they're really good. They're noise canceling. You know, the wireless chart, you, you can give all the rational reasons why that $249 purchase was somehow a rational decision. But that's second. The emotional decision happens first. And so this, this whole search call process is basically to, to focus on that. So with this in mind, let me just talk through the recommendation. Yeah. So the first thing you see here is the recommendation actually has three parts. And the, the first part is essentially an opt-in to the pitch of immediately after the recap, you say, I believe I can help you. Would you like me to share how? Ideally, they say yes. But remember, you just activated the reciprocity effect. They always say yes. Um, right. And then you say, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what you really want is this key result. So this is where you have to reference your notes really for the first time to say like, this is the result that matters to you. I can clearly see that you have these resources, which should make it very simple for you to achieve that. I'd love to help you remove this roadblock that's standing in your way. Does what I'm describing, does that sound like a good fit so far? This is essentially mirroring. It's a prescriptive mirror, basically, where you're saying like, you want this result, you have this resource, let's remove this roadblock. Does that sound like a good fit so far? Well, first of all, they better say, yeah, they almost always say yes, because you just repeat it back to them in their own words, like what they said, the result they wanted, the roadblock and the resources. Now they give you a long list of things typically. So you're kind of cherry picking what you believe is the most emotionally triggering. Right. But what I find is that, I mean, when I share this with someone, even though you're repeating back to them what they said over and over again, 
I've had clients on the other side be like, oh my gosh, it's like you could read my mind. I'm like, yes, that is exactly what I want. And like, well, I mean, yeah, I just asked you or then repeated back to you. <laughs> it's showing, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, act, it's active listening is what it is, really. Right. But this is really strategic. So this yeah. right here is a, is a double opt-in. They say yes, and then yes. Humans love patterns of three. So when you say, well, great, I have a program that is designed to promise, this is where we insert the promise, and I'd love to have you join. Is that something you would like to do? Every bone in their body wants to say yes a third time. Matt, what is missing from this line here that you would expect to be there when I'm selling an expensive product or any product whatsoever? What's not in the sentence? Um, you stumped me. I'm like, I should know this. Um, no, it's okay. <laughs> well, think about it, right? Um, so we've got this call and this, this is the first time we've ever yeah. mentioned the product. The first time in the call we've ever mentioned the product. Right. Everyone that's signed it, you know, help you with what write a you know best selling author book, you know, or yeah. book. Um, I'd love to have you join. Is that something you would like to do? You haven't talked about obviously, you know, price or anything like that whatsoever, or any any of those things, or or really any yes, of exactly. the, oh, you know, program details. You know, we haven't talked about anything the head cares about. Yeah. I yeah. haven't talked about what's the price, when does it start, how much one-on-one -on -one time do I get, what do you pay for, or do you have payment plans, do you, like, any of those details. Um, and that's that's important. Now, that means you should get one of two answers to this question, either no because or yes but, because you haven't given them a lot of information, right? So they need to be able to say something like, well, right. yes, but how much does it cost? But then the answer is, uh, whatever the price, whatever the answer is, what is, what is your kind of core program cost? The accelerator program, is it 10,000 or 12,000 or something like that? Yeah. So yeah, our, our like accelerator program would be yeah 12 to, to 16, depending on how you pay for it. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, so it's 12,000 full pay. Is that right? Or uh, yeah. If you got, if we've got like a special deal, we do 12,000, but standard okay. price is 16. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, let's just say 16 for the sake of this conversation then. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's literally, you say, it's literally when someone's like, is that something you like to do? And it's like, well, yes, but how much does it cost? You say, it's $60,000. Is that something you like to do? And they say, well, uh, do you have, do you have payment plans available? And you're like, oh yeah, we can do that in five payments of three, you know, whatever that number is. Um, does that work for you? And you're just coming back. It's, this is a, basically this is a customer led close because you're giving them only enough information to resolve the current, the current you know, they've got the head and the heart are both arguing at this point because they've already clarified, yes, yes, and yes, they want what you're offering them. So now their head and their heart are fighting and the head's saying, like, well, hold on a second, I don't know what it costs. You just need to give the head just enough information to be able to resolve that one thing. What most people do in this situation, and I don't know if this is true about like full-time professional salespeople, but what most coaches do in this situation is they overshare and they introduce objections. Where they say, where someone says, like, I have a program, I'd love to have you join. Is that something you'd like to do? And they're like, well, yes, but how much does it cost? And they say, oh, well, it's it's ten thousand dollars. We also do five payments of um, twenty two hundred, which is like, you know, like if you do the math, it's a little more than ten thousand. You know, we got to get our cut. We're not the bank or whatever. Um, but that works for most people. I have done that a twelve month pay before, but like I don't do that normally. Um, and then, uh, you know, you kind of like, usually this is what people do is that they'll start to, and they'll say like, I know that sounds like a lot of money, but actually. It's really worth it. If you think about, if you add up all the things that you'd have to pay for, if you went to publish a book on your own and you didn't work with us, it's going to cover about like half of that. And of course we got to make our margin, you know, like I don't, I don't do this for free. And so we kind of like, uh, obviously Matt, I'm assuming you don't do what I'm saying, but I'm just yeah. saying this is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, you're good. <laughs> you know? um, but but yeah, what, it's yeah. like that overshare and over, you know, it's like, we don't, all of those things make the head confuse the heart is essentially like, or, exactly. or, you know, instead of really keeping it on what it needs to be. Yes. And but introduces fine. objections because typically yeah. what I find is that like, especially, well, what I find is that most coaches, when they use, do this, if, if they allow themselves to speak freely in this section, they'll speak the most about whatever they're the most insecure about, whatever they're the least confident about. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they actually end up, you know, like I was having a bad day on a surf call. I, I go back and record, listen to my own transcripts sometimes because 
right. I I want to improve, but also because I, I don't know, enjoy the pain and suffering. I'm not sure. But like I could listen to it. I could tell like there was a day where like I, you know, like I had a bad day and I was going back and listening to the recordings. And I was just feeling really insecure about the price that day, I guess, because I spent, you can see the timestamp, you know, I spent four and a half minutes just justifying the price when he said like, how much does it cost? Mm. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I'm introducing objections the whole time. And they're like, okay, you know, um, <laughs> but, but the first question someone asks here, well, the first or second question is usually indicative of which of these hurdles are they still trying to overcome? Because if, they're, if their question is something about time or money, that usually means they're already sold as long as they said yes to these previous things. Because they're like, okay, yes, I want to do it, but how much does it cost? When does it start? If their first question is something like, okay, well, can you give me some examples of like people that you've done this for before? They're still on believability. Yep. Um, and so sometimes that they're on credibility. Like, oh, like, how did you learn this? And they're like politely saying like, who made you the guru? Yeah. yeah. You know? How long have you guys been in business before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long have you guys been in business? Okay, cool. Like um, you guys have helped other people? Cool, cool, cool. Um, Anybody like me? You know, like you're kind of like, and so with this filter of credibility, believability, and scarcity, you basically, the customer gets to tell you, hey, here's the hurdle that I currently am trying to overcome. And then you give them the answer that helps them overcome that hurdle. And then say, what other questions do you have? Is this something you'd like to do? Would you like to do yeah. this? Until they say yes, essentially. Um, so that's the circle call framework um, in summary. I mean, I- Cool. Yeah. So what do you think about it? What questions do you have about it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I really like it. I think it mirrors very similar to what we do, but um, there's a couple of nuances that are different that um, I really like. I mean, that I think are like, ooh, okay. Yeah, that could be that could be tuned a little bit differently. I I can't regurgitate right this second, like oh, sure. this is how I would do that necessarily. But yeah, um, I really want to take like this and like have it next to me on on my next conversation, like at in ten minutes, um, right? <laughs> but um, <laughs> and, and like literally, I'll drop like, you a link. Yeah, yeah, no, that would be really helpful because like I I also love just the simplicity of like, here's the notes you're taking. So you can really, mm -hmm. you know, recall those quickly. Mm -hmm. And then also I love the hurdle. I just love the image of hurdles. Cause it's like, yeah, yeah we got to get over this hurdle and then we got to get over this hurdle and and that's it. So, and they um, want the trophy. Like we, we I yeah. want them to get the trophy. They want the trophy. Like we all want the same thing here. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I think where probably the area that I feel is maybe a little bit different or where, you know, it's like, okay, I need to see how that works is that last part of like, I, I think there's, especially with the author process, because there's so mm -hmm. much like, uh, that is more on the scarcity side of like logistics. Like how does that actually work time, yeah. you know, effort where it's like, okay, let me walk you through as minimal of that as possible. But it's like, okay, yeah. Does that, I mean, is that what you're looking for? You know, would mm -hmm. you want would you want that? If if so, then okay, great. Let me walk you through what you know what that looks like, and yeah. that would probably be that scarcity because I think everything would get over that those first two hurdles, but that part would you know would need to have some of that in there. Uh, how, but to your point, maybe yeah, maybe not. Um, and you know what kind of you know yeah. how little does it can it be exactly? Yeah, I mean honestly, I think. I mean, my, my opinion there is that sometimes that that whole recommendation period becomes really long. It's just customer led. And so I'm not saying you don't share how long is the right. program? What does it include? What's the price? That kind of stuff. It's just, you only share what they ask about because yeah. that, that tells you exactly what they need to know because the more logistics and details you share, the more the heart becomes less interested and the head starts to take over the conversation. And you don't want that until the heart's already sold. Um, yeah. And so I think like for you, that promise might be as simple as, as saying like, you know, like, well, hey, we have an accelerator program where we'll work with you to help you write and publish a best-selling book. Is that something you'd like to do? And like, well, yeah, that's why I'm here. How can, when do we start? You know, like that's, I think that's literally it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's a little nerve wracking to do it because it's like, you feel like you're like, you, you, you have to kind of just lean into it of like you're handing the reins to the customer essentially at that point. Um, right. But that's why it's so different from every other sales call they've been on. Now, I will say for your specific situation, and this may be true for other people who are watching this, 
um, I noticed that, well, you'll notice that I don't even mention that a product exists until that very last line. And I'm trying to keep the conversation focused on them. I want them to be in the mental state of dreaming as long as possible, not the mental state of shopping. Yeah. However, I will say the way that you guys currently set up a breakthrough strategy session, it it does, it is explicitly shopping because like, like the questions you ask, like, Hey, are you ready to invest? How much are you willing to invest in your book? Like all those kinds of questions that are currently in your like process before someone even meets with somebody that is training someone like, Oh, okay. I'm showing up for a shopping call. And so this is going to be a little bit of a plot twist for them. If they show up expecting one thing and they're like, Oh my gosh, this guy just like genuinely cares about me and wants to like help me unpack my dreams. And like, but that might be really strong. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, you know, a break of like, Oh, whoa. Okay. This is different than, and yes. I mean, obviously if everybody they're talking to, which most of the time they are shopping, I mean, that's part yeah. of challenge, you know, whether we put it in there or not, like they're talking yeah. to several people and it's like, Oh wow, this is a very different conversation. And I mean, right. I, I, we get that a lot anyway, cause it's just the way that we sell, yeah. but, um, but I mean, even this, I think would even turn that up, you know, di that dial a little bit more. So Cool. Um, I will I'll, I'll share a couple. Yeah. So your situation is like, you're doing a lot of formally called sales calls. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you know, like on a team of people who are, um, so that's, I'm interested to see how it works there, but I don't see any reason why it would work any differently because the clients that I have that do it where they're, 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 they have their own group coaching program and they're doing their own serve calls. Um, you, you know, consistently I've had people who have zero sales experience, you know, closing, 40 to 50 to 60% or more of their sales. One of my clients, he's a hundred percent close rate because uh, he always has a downsell. I mean, essentially like basically so far, everybody's met with has either joined his several thousand dollar group coaching program or they've joined as a, as a, in his membership site. And so he's like, well, yeah. in his words, he's like, I got a hundred percent close rate. Um, so, yeah. but I think like what's That's key there is, is what's key there is the recommendation is the fact that part of being an effective coach in a surf call, Matt, is that, you know, when you get the recommendation, like this is what you need to do. Cause I know you guys have different offers. Right. And so just like focusing on that one and don't even mention the others until someone just like, for some reason is like, absolutely a no. And then I would go either higher or lower, depending upon what their objection was. Um, yeah. 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 It's like, this is my recommendation. I'm going to make it and stick here until you yeah. tell me otherwise. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I know you've only got like a few minutes, but do you have any questions before you try this out? No, no. I think I, no, I got the link. I've got it up right here. So I'm going to like, cool. yeah, give me a couple minutes before my call so I can prep for it. And then, yeah, yeah I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, try it out. I'm going to have to work it in a little bit. Oh, of um, course. That's but fine. yeah, I, um, no, I want to practice this too. I like some of the, yeah, just the way that this frames up some of the questions, I think inherently gets a deeper answer, you know? Yes. Um, and so that's, that's really yeah. cool. Oh, one last thing I'll mention about this, the reason what makes it a customer research call is that all of the questions that I have there are industry generic. They don't mention anything about yeah. your business, your books, that kind of stuff. That's by design. Cause like there is context of why they're meeting with you. Like you're wearing the self publishing.com hat. Like they know, <laughs> you, they know why they're there. So you yeah. shouldn't have to like say a lot about books or self publishing. They should volunteer that. But what's really key about that is giving, so asking someone an open-ended question and allowing them to say whatever comes to mind actually helps you. Once you've got a, done a few serve calls and you have notes on results and roadblocks and resources, you may discover there's a whole other version of your 10 X promise based on what customers are telling you. Yeah. Um, so like for me, I found out that I, I was helping people launch group coaching programs and then over and over and over again, when I get into what specific revenue goal they had, the answer was $10,000 a month. And so I just changed my promise to earn $10,000 a month from a brand new group coaching program. And my sales dramatically grew because I was just copying back what people were telling me. And so yeah. that's why the customer research part becomes into play. There's some, yeah, there's some like, okay, cool. As I'm asking these questions, I'm gathering that. And then it's like, mm -hmm. oh, cool. I keep hearing this. So I'm just going right. to phrasing to it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll let okay. you get ready for your call. Please let me know how it goes and uh, let me know. Yeah. Just let me know what other questions you have once you start practicing serve calls. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks, John. This has been awesome. Uh, I appreciate it. it. And looking forward to, yeah, just helping serve better. So awesome. All right. Keep up the good work, Matt. Cool, man. Thank you.